All right, so we talked about this problem a little bit. Let's put our plan into action. So just for quick review, um, we have this truss. We want to find the bar force in each element and state whether it's uh, compression or tension. And we're using the method of joints here. So again, we want to start at a joint um, which has only uh, two unknowns since we're writing uh, two equations of equilibrium. And as we discussed previously, the only joint really to start with without finding reactions would be to start at joint D. So let's do that. So joint D. So here's D. There's the applied force at D, uh, 600 <coughs> newtons. And I'm going to assume in tension in force CD and tension in force DE. If you look carefully at the um, geometry, you should see that that angle is a 3, 4, 5. Kind of small, sorry about that. Now I can sum forces in the X and I can sum forces in the Y. What one equation can I write initially to get one of, one of these unknowns? Yeah, if you look at it, only uh, DE has an X component. CD does not, so that would be a good, a good place to start. So I'm going to start by assuming to the right is positive and I'm going to sum forces in the X direction and make sure they're in equilibrium. And then I'm going to get all my pieces together. So uh, DE will be negative according to my sign convention and the X component would be three-fifths of DE to the left and then the applied load there of 600 newtons. So I should be able to find the force in DE and that's just going to be a thousand. So one thousand Newtons, and it looks like I get a positive value. So it looks like DE. Did I get a positive value? No, I messed up. This is negative, so this should be negative. Yeah, it should be compression. Now why do I think that? Um, with all the forces acting to the left, uh, more than likely the coordinates of D and C are going to move to the left, and as they do that, uh, these members on this side will become shorter, they'll compress. So I'm sorry about that. So that is a negative here and a negative there. Kind of messed that up. Uh, then we can come back and get our sum of the forces in the y direction. Uh, when I do that, I have acting down four-fifths of DE and I have then the entire amount of the force CD. So you put your DE in here, uh, the signs cancel. It looks like CD is going to be in tension and it looks like it's going to be 800. Does that seem reasonable? Do you guys get the same values? Okay, so two down, uh, four to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little squiggle in here to let me know that I've got those two. So it'll help me visualize where to go next. So let's examine E. Well, even though I know this one, I still have one, two, three unknowns, so E's not a good place to go. Uh, joint C has one, two. Ah, so C's the best place to go. So we'll We'll go. Our second step will be to draw the free body diagram for C. And at C, I have an additional 900 newton force acting to the left, and then I have some forces. So in tension, I have force acting up of CD force acting down of BC 
and then a force acting horizontally, I'll call that CE. All the forces are either in the X or Y direction, so this is going to be uh, relatively easy. And I'm also going to put a little orange line under this one to let you know that I know CD from the previous problem. So really there's no advantage to summing forces X or Y in any order. Each one will give you a result. So I'll just start by uh, summing forces in the X direction. So when I do that, I have uh, the force in CE acting to the left. That's negative. And I have my applied force of 900 newtons also acting to the left. So it looks like CE then is just going to be negative 900. And then I can sum forces in the y direction. Make sure they're in equilibrium. So in the y direction, I have CE acting, I'm sorry, CD acting up, and then the force BC acting down. Remember, CD came out to be 800, so it looks like BC is equal to that, and it's also 800. Let's stop for a second and think about this. Does it make sense that this, these elements along this right edge are in tension? Well, as the load applies from right to left, both these nodes are probably going to try to move over, and this whole edge is going to slowly stretch. So it seems, seems logical that all these elements will be in tension and likewise, similar argument, all these elements on the left side will be in compression. These in the middle, a little harder to see, it looks like uh, EC came out to be uh, compression. So this element here is actually shortening. We'll find out what um, the force in BE is in a second. So I'll go ahead and add the, my accounting. So now I know those. So I'm just down to finding these two guys to finish the problem. Again, the way we're working this, uh, I still have three unknowns at A, so A is out. Uh, I have three unknowns at B, uh, bar force and two reactions, that's out. So I'm really left with just the joint at E. So let's look at that. So I'll draw my free body diagram at E. No applied load there, but I do have a lot of forces. I have the force in CE. I have the force in DE. The force in AE. And the force in BE. A lot of things. But remember that we have DE already from our free body diagram, I mean from our method of joints at D, and we have CE from our joint at C. So there's just really two unknowns. Um, both these forces have slopes that can be measured um, three to four, so three horizontal to four vertical. So really there's two unknowns, force in AE, force in BE. They both have X components, they both have Y components. So we'll just um, go ahead and solve them the best we can. Uh, we're gonna end up with two equations and two unknowns. So it's gonna be a little bit uh, trickier than before. So let's see what we're gonna get. Some forces in the x direction. Oh, I need to add also that uh, DE has the same 3, 4. So everybody's piling into the x component. So I'll just work my way around kind of counterclockwise. I'll start with AE. So that looks like it's negative uh, 3 this, the force in AE, and then plus 
3 this the force in BE plus the force in CE plus 3 this of DE. Remember, we know these two things. So what is CE? It's negative 900, and DE is negative 1,000. So what would that be? Um, so I can rewrite this equation as 3 fifths AE plus 3 fifths BE. Now CE is negative 900 and DE is negative 1,000 times 3 fifths would be 600. So it looks like negative 1,500. Does that look good to you guys? So if I move that to the other side of the equation, I'll get 1,500. Somebody check that for me. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I think I got the signs right. So we'll have to hold on to that equation, and then we'll generate one for the y. So in the y direction, uh, only three of the forces contribute. Again, I'll go kind of counterclockwise starting here at the bottom. So I'll have minus four-fifths the force in AE, minus four-fifths the force in BE, that takes care of those two, and then going up, positive four-fifths the force in DE. But remember, we know DE. DE is a thousand, or sorry, a negative a thousand. So therefore, that equation can be rewritten this way as minus four-fifths AE minus four-fifths BE and you put your negative thousand in here that would be negative 800 throw that to the other side I get 800 so I've got one equation two equations uh, I'm not going to solve this right now it's going to take too it would take too long um, but you can you can see that I could take equation one or two I don't see any advantage in one right now. Now one good thing is that they all have this common three-fifths so I could divide everything through by three-fifths to make the problem a little easier. And the same thing here, I could divide all this by four-fifths. Actually this may not be a hard problem to solve. Maybe I'll just give it a shot real quick. I'll we'll have to get another piece of paper. Hang on. Alright, let's see if we can solve these equations pull up an extra sheet here and I'm going to uh, try to rewrite equation one. So let's see, equation one. I'm going to divide through uh, by three-fifths. So I'd have minus FAE plus FBE and let's see, 1,500 divided by um, or sorry, yeah, divided by 3 fifths is 2,500. And my second equation, which was here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to now divide by 4 fifths. So I'd have minus FAE minus the force in BE is equal to 800 divided by 4 fifths is 1,000. So those are my two equations. Let's see if I can solve them. So look at the first equation, I'll create a substitution. I'll say the force in BE is equal to 2,500 kilonewtons 
minus the force in A E then my second equation becomes uh, minus force in AE minus VE and I'll just plug that right in so that'll be the 2500 kilonewtons minus the force in AE and that's equal to a thousand kilonewtons so I should now be able to solve for this I can take my 2500 and um, move it to the other side of the equation that would give me 3500 on the right hand side and on the left hand side I would have minus 2 AE I've got two of those and that will be equal to 3500 kilonewtons so it looks like I can solve for AE and it's minus 1750 uh, kilonewtons. There's one more of the bar forces. And then once I know AE, I can plug that back into there and find the force in uh, BE. So let's see, I got 2500 plus or minus a negative 1750 gives me a positive 750. Hopefully that's right. No, that doesn't look right, does it? Made a mistake here somewhere. Um, oh, this was this was a positive. So this was a positive. Oh, luckily enough, this came out right. So a little backtracking, but um, when I caught my error, it still seems like it's working out okay. All right, so I think those are the correct solutions, and that's how we would solve that problem. So um, ended up with AE being in compression, and that matched our intuition that we talked about earlier. And BE, I don't really have any way to explain clearly why that one would be, but it looks like that's intention. All right. Any other questions? All right. I'll stop this.